to My American Dream, a monthly program of Finlandia Foundation National. During this program series, we are interviewing Finnish entrepreneurs who have come to the U.S. chasing their American dream. Finlandia Foundation is a nonprofit philanthropic organization that was established in Pasadena, California in 1953 for the purpose of supporting and celebrating Finnish American heritage while maintaining ties to contemporary Finland. A major source of private funding for Finnish and Finnish American cultural activities, Finlandia Foundation awards grants and scholarships and sponsors a variety of programs, from concerts to book talks to webinars and online presentations like My American Dream. To finance the production of its programming, Finlandia Foundation relies on private donations. Please visit our website to find out how you can help. Hi, my name is Michel Wandel, and welcome to this episode of My American Dream. As you can see, we're not in our ordinary environment here, but we actually ended up in a studio in Hollywood. And uh, my guest is Jonas Karlsson. Jonas came here from Finland uh, a number of years ago, and uh, I will let him tell you more about it. Yeah. So how did you end up here? Short story or long story? Well, you know, <laughs> long we story have... short. Yeah, there you go. Uh, how did I end up here? Well, I I started doing trips here about like seven or eight years ago. And I did probably 20 trips before I ended up like moving here. Uh, but I think just the... I came, the first time I came here was like 2013 and I immediately noticed that, okay... I have a lot more to give here than back home and there's I have more opportunities and the transition to just move here was super easy and it kind of came nat I think I I I haven't moved yet. I think I'm still on that that long trip. Okay. You know, yeah. but uh but yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So anyway, b sort of we already came here in a way but 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 you you got you got started in in uh in in uh, Siunti or out sort of west of west of Helsinki, yeah. and and grew up there and all of that. When when did you sort of move into music and how how, how did that whole thing? So yeah, I grew up in a small town called Siuntio, and I I noticed that my neighbor was doing music. He was rapping, mm. and I thought that was super interesting. I'd never seen anything like that, or, or and he was doing a. a at home and he was able to record at home and I, I was I, I immediately noticed that okay I'm into this I want to learn how to do this and I want to learn more so we started hanging out a lot and we ended up just sitting in my bedroom every week and doing music um, so that's kind of how it started and then uh, you know I went to school and everything kind of had it like, as a hobby on the side but my good friend decided to um, move to Sweden and, and, and study in Sweden. He called me or said that, hey, they also have a, a audio engineering. Like, you can study mm. audio engineering here. You should come. And uh, that's when I kind of probably decided to go for it. Uh, before that, I didn't have a clue and music was just a hobby. Mm. So we, did, we moved there and it was easy, you know, with a friend to move to Stockholm and I studied there for a couple of years and noticed pretty quick that this is, you know, this, this is, is it. This is fun. I like this. I'm good at it, and I'm I'm enjoying, you know, classes and school. You yeah. know, uh, so yeah. So when we moved back from uh, from Sweden, we built a studio in Helsinki with my friend who I who I met in in Stockholm, and yeah, from there started. You know, producing more and more. You know, we recorded a lot of bands, uh, and that's how I kind of got into into the whole scene in Helsinki, and yeah. Finland. Yeah, yeah. And you, uh, you still? I mean, you have played in bands, and do, do you still have a band back there? Yeah. So yeah, we had you know made some uh, some songs and like I uh, played them for for some friends at, at the studio, and and we ended up signing to EMI uh, at the time, now Universal. Uh, with my band and that's 
that's the start of like songwriting and producing. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was more audio engineering and recording and stuff. Uh, so yeah, we had a band. We still have the band, mm -hmm. but you know, they're in Helsinki. It's quite distant. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, so a little, it's a yeah. little bit of a distance there. Zoom yeah. gigs. Yeah, Zoom gigs for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I still have the band, but I, I mainly focus on songwriting and producing for other artists right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, in, in Finland, the, how, how long did you work there and how much? I mean, you, you, you had, you had some, some pretty significant successes there also in the Finnish game of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, my band Eloku, we, we, had, um, we had some success with the, with the songs and albums we released. Uh, um, uh, I worked with, an, with another producer called Hank Solo and we did, uh, we did and we produced an album for a guy called Kasmir. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he ended up winning some Finnish Grammys and we won uh, Song of the Year um, with him. Uh, and then I just I worked on random projects, just like with labels back there. But I always been interested in the more international music scene. Mm -hmm. uh, also, also maybe just growing up with uh, my parents, you know, not listening too much to Finnish music. Yeah. I think that played a big part of just like my whole childhood was, you know. It was either Swedish music or then just like whatever is playing mm -hmm. here right now. And I think that's been the biggest like positive and a negative side for me and probably the biggest reason why I'm here at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Did, uh, did your parents, were they musical? Did they play instruments? Did, they, did you have like lots of music in the house when you grew up? Yes. Uh, my mom is, uh, she used to sing in a choir and, mm. and she, she has a really musical ear. My dad says he's musical, but he's not. <laughs> uh, uh, but I think he played the, the bassoon or some, yeah. like some, some weird instrument. He tried. Uh, my sister is, uh, uh, and uh, my mom said that she always listened to classical music when when yeah, I was still yeah. in the in the in her yeah, tummy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember every night going to sleep, and I heard, you know, a little bit of Celine Dion or something in the background. Yeah, I remember yeah, music yeah. like always uh, when I was young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, when you were still in Finland, what was the first gig, the first thing that brought you over here to to LA? So yeah, we had the we we, we signed uh, to EMI with my band, and then a short period after that, I did my first uh, publishing deal. So with mm -hmm. a publishing company, and started writing for other artists. And the publishing company was one of the few that also uh, they all they, they were also interested in the international market and mm -hmm. and uh, to write you know over overseas for artists here or like in UK or Germany. Uh, so I started doing trips to Berlin. That was the first mm -hmm. like writing mm -hmm. trip mm -hmm. to Berlin. Um, because that's kind of the center of, of music in, in, in Europe. And there I, you know, wrote with people from here and, you know, from, from the UK, from Spain. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. kind of the, the signing to that publishing company was, was the like kickstart to like, Oh, you can actually go overseas. You could, just fly there and yeah. write with other artists. You don't have to write anything like they like just here in Finland, and that was and we did the first trip I think a year into my publishing deal to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. So actually, tell us a little bit about what how does a music producer fill his day? Or I, I guess it's actually more night because your yes. <laughs> work hours I know are really yeah. really crazy. But. Yeah, um, it really. It's different. So, so we have we write songs, and then we it's called a session. You meet up with like three, four random people that are songwriters, and there's usually one producer in the room who takes care mm. of the production and the technical side, like recording and, mm. and doing everything on the computer. Uh, and that's my role. So usually, you know, people have their own spot, or you know, they rent a studio. So usually, you wait here. People tend to like to go, you know, hiking and stuff in the morning when it's still like sunny outside. So we start around like maybe noon. Mm. Uh, and then we, yeah, you, you 
sit down and chat with the people you just met uh, and you write something usually, you know, anything from two hours to eight hours and then they leave, I stay, I work on the production and I have to send out like a demo uh, that night or next yeah. day. But yeah. so I, you know, I sit until maybe nine, ten in the evening and then at some point you have to eat uh, then maybe go back in because I have a studio at home so it's easy to just open up the door again and so but that's kind of like the probably the a day of a producer and then yeah, when I don't yeah. write I work on all the songs we've been writing for or you know if that one song ends up um, for an artist or an artist cuts mm, the song mm. and records the song it's of course my job to you know work on it so the days i don't write i usually work on productions and yeah and stuff yeah. that needs to needs to get done yeah yeah okay so so this this is actually the studio at home that he <laughs> that you <Yeah>. just <laughs> mentions so yeah. with with all its nitsy stuff and uh, and a great view out into yeah. the garden and uh and, and, and all of the paraphernalia that goes with it, and it's, yeah. it's really cool. But do, have you had any, any names, any people in here that people will recognize that have come here and, and, and worked with you? Usually, usually when, it's a, when it's a big artist, the label uh, rents out a studio, one of those big studios mm -hmm. with the big desk that nobody ever, ever uses. They have a thing they put on, see where you can put your laptop nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but usually we, we work there when we record with an artist or something yeah. like that. Uh, but, you know, songwriting and stuff like that, it doesn't really, you know, make a lot of sense to rent out those yeah. expensive studios. So people just, you know, have stuff like this at home mm. to be able to do, you know, sessions easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, tell us about some of, some of the bigger names that you have worked with here. Well, probably... <sighs> Probably biggest right now is is with John, uh, John Legend that I had, uh, you know, privilege. Grammy winner. Yeah, <laughs> we I have like had the pr privilege to work with him. Uh, it's, it's like it's two years ago now, mm. uh, but yeah, we that's probably you know the biggest name right now. Yeah, uh, that I've worked with. Yeah. But that, yeah, congratulations Thank for that. You. That's that's Thank quite you. a quite a achievement. I mean, in Finland, that is uh, is of course a very competitive and sporting nation. Yeah. You know, if you have if you have won a small skiing competition somewhere in the Turkish mountains, you get the first you know <laughs> first page picture and everything. Yeah. But if you win a Grammy, I mean, there probably hasn't been too much too yeah. much written in Finland about it. It but, hasn't but been. Some. Yes, yeah. some. It hasn't been, and I, I you know, it's like, I'm not, I, I'm not in this I because yeah. of the the Grammy. I think, you know, you know, it's nice, and it's mm. a, always like a nice boost because this industry is really ups and downs, mm. and I say that's the hardest part. And one of those, like, how would you say, like, it's an it's an, like that okay stamp. Like you're yeah, doing something yeah, yeah. good, yeah. but uh, uh, the biggest reason probably for me leaving the Finnish music scene was because I didn't want to do it for the money or just because yeah. of, you know, I just wanted to do stuff that I really love and I really like. And like when I wake up in the morning, I can just like, can't wait to go to work. Yeah, And that's how I, you know, try to try to keep it and of course when you achieve something like a Grammy or something it's like it's always like a nice oh, like a you're doing good it's <laughs> you're uh, okay <laughs> it's uh, it's quite a recognition and it's it's a recognition in a market that is like super super competitive yeah. so so uh, don't is. don't don't kid yourself it's yeah. actually a big deal <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's a big deal yeah. certainly certainly I'm grateful yeah so uh, what else of interest? What, what, what would you tell uh, sort of younger folks in, in Finland or, 
or here in the States that, that, that have, a, have an inkling for getting into music in some form or shape and, and, and now look at you and I said, geez, you know, mm. you got, you got from, from Seon to, yeah. to LA, how, you know, can I follow your path? I mean, what, uh, what, what, what would you tell them, some, some cues? I think the, the biggest thing is not to give up. Mm. It's really hard and I get this question quite a lot and I try to always think like, what, what, what's the right answer? I think what got me here is my stubbornness and I'm, I don't give up. If, I, if I'm yeah. set for something, I usually, I work until I get it or do something mm. until I achieve that one thing. Um, and probably that, that's the biggest thing that, you know, made me who I am today and, and you know, uh, got me here. Yeah. So I, I think what I think just don't give up. And and I remember when I when we first started talking about doing trips to Los Angeles and like doing writing trips ab abroad and and the biggest question for me was when I heard people talking was ah oh, you know there's so many good writers out there and mm. there's just so mm. many producers and there's so many songwriters and I'd say don't go down that road and just you know everyone who you can you can definitely make it. It's not about that. Yeah, you know? it's about your sisu. It's right? about sisu and it's about timing yeah. and having the stars aligned in it. That's what we you know, I've 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 been producing for almost ten years now, and I think like the last five years I've been pretty okay at it. But you know, mm. it didn't bring me the big artist names or the big mm. gigs right away. It just it has to be like it's a lot about timing and and for example that John song was written a couple of years before it came out so you know it's yeah. a old song now and you have to just like it's a the business is not very fast it's like it takes a long time to to get there but yeah yeah so yeah no i mean i'm, I'm that that's that's similar in in uh, almost any business you have to exactly. have the sisu you have to have the passion you have to believe in yourself exactly. and actually do things for yourself and not for other people. Exactly. And, no, that's and, uh, 100%. And that's, yeah, that's, 100%. Uh, that's a good, yeah. good, 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 uh, good result. Yeah. So have, have you seen, uh, have you seen, or are there lots of, of Finnish young musicians or music industry people around here? Um, there isn't. There isn't. Mm. I, 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 I know a couple guys that... Um, are from Finland that that are here right now, uh, but there's unfortunately there's not a lot of people. There's a lot of people doing trips back and forth, and you know mm. that's great. Um, but living here at the moment, there there's not a lot of like musicians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about in general from from take Sweden that is a very music industry wise a very successful country? Are there lots of Swedes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's Damn. a lot of Swedes, yeah. a lot of Norwegian people. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're, we're not known for sort of pushing ourselves forward, no. are we? No. Really sort of as a culture. But, no, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, <laughs> there's a big that's difference. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So in, in, in this business, you, of course, we all hear about the really the big names and all of that. And... and how they become like uh, instant gazillionaires in in no time by having one or two hits mm. and then uh, you know whatever happens after mm. that but but for you know like normal people i mean the people who actually make stuff happen mm. <laughs> in yeah. this business yeah. is it is it uh, is it the very well paid business is it something that that people are struggling mm. sort of mm. financially or or uh, you know, how, how do you see it, if you I, have a reference? Uh, I'd see it, I'd, it depends so much. Like, I mean, there's a handful of people that probably, you know, make a lot, a lot of money. But mm -hmm. I've always said that if I would want to be in something for the money, it probably shouldn't be what I'm doing <laughs> right now. Uh, it's more for just the, you know, to being to just be be able to do what I do is enough for me and be here, uh, but um, it, people are struggling right now. I think I'm I don't know too much about like the I don't want to go too much into details, but you know mm. like with the 
you know, not having analog copies like CDs anymore, that changed yeah. a lot of stuff. And Spotify yeah. and streaming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I know songwriters are struggling right now. And uh, yeah, times are changing. We're definitely in some kind of change right now. And, you know, from where I started, my band still sold. We got a, we, we got, I think we sold like the gold amount of like analog CD copies. And I know yeah. my mom still has CDs at home. Yeah. Right now, that feels really weird. Yeah. And that's just yeah. me. I've been yeah. in this for like 10 years now. And, and even that feels now like, did we really have CDs back then? And she's like, yeah, there's a bunch of CDs at home. And I'm like, wow, that's actually really, really funny. And the artist, Cosmere, I think, was the first one to get a, a gold record from digital streams. So I, I remember having yeah. a USB stick instead of yeah. the CD. Yeah. That never stuck. They yeah. still didn't do the CD. <laughs> it didn't look so good. But I remember him being, I think, one of the first in Finland that got like a gold record, record from Spotify streams yeah. and iTunes streams like combined. So times are changing, and I think... There's probably going to be, you know, it's never going to die. And I don't think mm -hmm. songwriting is never going to die as an, as an occupation, like, a, mm. you know. But um, I don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. No that, idea. As, as, as a business, it, it, it will sort of develop and change, yeah. as, as does every business. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what, how much of our consumption is online today yeah. versus what it was 10 years yeah. ago, it's, of course, night and day and... 100%. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely have to show you. I have something called C cassettes. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> I've heard of them. Yeah. I've heard of them. But, yeah, like, like to sum up the question, yeah. like, can you make, yeah, you can make, you can make a lot of money if you, if you know business. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of ways to, to make money in this business. So maybe not focus on, like, one thing only, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff you can do with, publishing and synchronization and and you know labels and you know yeah, management exactly. and stuff like that exactly so, yeah so uh being here in la we of course were were well aware of the fact that this is really the entertainment center of the world yeah. in many ways but then the u.s has has a bunch of uh of cities that have have sort of a really strong musical mm. sort of culture and and you know you have you have certain types of music that is you know jazz is New Orleans mm. and and yeah. and uh, you know country is in Nashville and yeah. and my city Austin yeah. has its blues yeah, and true. and all of that but is there really anything big going on outside of, I guess, Nashville? Because mm. the country music is so big in this country. It's but, really big. but, 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 is is it is it really as focused into LA the music business as it as people probably think? I think a lot of people still. I think when we talk about pop music, mm. the labels are here or in New York, and then when we talk about songwriting for, you know pop music, popular mm. music, um, the songwriters tend to move to LA. So every, yeah. you know, when I'm in a session, I, I, I talked to some, to, to a friend of mine about this, and I think I met one person from Los Angeles. Like everybody yeah. else is from somewhere else. And, and this is kind of where everybody meets up yeah. within pop music. But I know, you know, if you want to do country music, usually people fly out to Nashville or, yeah. or something like that. But I think for for pop music, it's definitely, yeah, Los Angeles. Kind of. yeah. yeah, I mean, as 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 you said previously, you have lived here for a number of years, yeah. and you have been in New York, in L.A., and San yes. Francisco, yeah. and period. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, there's there's a, I, I've heard there's a good scene in New York and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, but some people then, you know, it's not enough. You know, here you can, you can work as much as you want. You know. Yeah. It's funny, you know, first when I moved, I noticed that, you know, everyone is some kind, somehow involved in the music industry or in the entertainment industry. It's like yeah. Uber drivers, they're like musician or actor or, yeah. the, you know, everybody you meet on the streets are like, yeah, I'm an actor. Yeah, I'm a yeah. producer. Yeah, I'm a yeah. songwriter. It's yeah. like, wow, yeah. everyone. Yeah, everybody is an actor, but they work <laughs> as a waiter in a restaurant. Yeah. But that's the yeah. struggle. Yeah, that's, that, that, that the, the struggle, struggle is yeah. is really like what we talked about before. It's like 
it's, uh, I think you, you, you have to start with the passion. You really have to start with the passion because there's going to be ups and downs and there's going to be situations where, where, you know, you, you, you're having hard times. So mm -hmm. I feel like you, you cannot go in thinking like, oh, I'm just going to do it for the money and the cars mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. chains, you know, mm -hmm. being, an, you know, you really have to be in it for the passion or you can be in it for the money, but we probably realize pretty fast that it's, yeah. it's not going to work out. It's going to work out. <laughs> yeah. no. Well, yeah. that's, again, yeah. most businesses are like that. I know, so, yeah. So, so it's, I think it's kind of the same for, yeah, yeah. a lot. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I, Jonas, want to thank you very much for your thank time. You taking us to your fancy studio. It's been Thank a pleasure you. to see you again. And uh, for all of you out there, check out Jonas Carlson on any online media and, and see what, what he has done and what he has achieved. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one.